Look, we've always known that Einstein was better than us, but now we know why. Anthony here for D News, and we are constantly hearing about Einstein's brain. It was removed about eight hours after his death, and we've just been poking at it ever since, looking for the differences that made it such a brilliant mind. And a study recently published in the journal Brain thinks that they've found the answer, and it's in the corpus callosum, the body's largest bundle of neuronal fibers that sits underneath your cerebral cortex. Among its functions is making sure that both halves of the brain can communicate with each other. Now, we've talked about the left brain, right brain myth and lateralization before, SparkNotes version, there's no such thing as a left or right brain person. You are a beautiful, unique snowflake that can do anything you want thanks to practice and neuroplasticity. However, the things you do are controlled by different parts of the brain. And if those parts are on different sides and need to work together, they've got to go through the corpus callosum to do it. Einstein's corpus callosum had extremely thick connections between the halves of three very interesting brain regions. His prefrontal cortex, which controls abstract thinking and decision making, his parietal lobe, which is all about sense and motor function, and his visual cortex, you know, for seeing. The thicker connections could be responsible for lower lateralization of brain activity and at least partially explain why he was so brilliant, which is interesting because lower lateralization in the brain has also been linked to schizophrenia and psychopathy. So, how do you get a brain like Einstein's? Last week I talked a little bit about neuroplasticity and how the more you use a part of your brain, the stronger it gets and the thicker its connections become. So in theory, to think like Einstein, you have got to do activities that will keep your corpus callosum active and use both hemispheres of your brain at once. Multiple studies have shown that musicians tend to use their whole brain more. Einstein himself was a violinist, so maybe taking up an instrument or music lessons could help. Handedness is connected to lateralization, so by being left-handed, I'm using the right part of my motor cortex. A 2004 study in Nature showed that juggling could help me strengthen up my whole brain activity by requiring me to use both hands. Just using your non-dominant hand throughout the day for things like brushing your teeth could potentially do the same thing. Logic and math puzzles are good because number estimates and comparisons use both halves of your parietal lobe. And if you're terrible at them, like me, it means you also get to work out your amygdala, your ventromedial prefrontal cortex, and your limbic system system by flying into a rage. Just remember to flip the desk over with your non-dominant hand. I have some issues. Anyway, an unanswered question here is whether Einstein was born with a more developed corpus callosum to begin with, which would have given this sort of thinking a head start. I also cannot tell you with a straight face that brushing your teeth with the wrong hand or playing the ukulele is going to turn you into the next great thinker. But making conscious decisions to learn, adapt, and be creative every day can't hurt. What do you think? Was Einstein